Hello, this is Pastor Stephen Anderson of Faithful Word Baptist Church. I'm here with uh, one of my church members, Brett Riley, and uh, he just got arrested on Monday, Memorial Day. Tell, tell us about what happened, Brett. Um, well, basically, uh, me and my family went uh, to uh, Bartlett Lake just because it was Memorial Day. We wanted to go to the lake, relax at the lake, have fun together, and um, <clears throat> went to the lake, and uh, I went out fishing with... Uh, my, my sister's fiance's two sons, mm -hmm. so my future's nephew-in-laws, right. if that's even something that's... But anyways, we, we went out uh, to go fishing, and uh, we went out and he had like a little eight-foot aluminum boat, you know, and we went out on that and found this little island and started fishing off this island. Um, and a few minutes into fishing off this island, I saw the sheriff, the sheriff's boat, mm -hmm. uh, start to come up to us. Okay. You know, and you could just tell by how quickly he was coming up and the way they were looking at us that, you know, right. they had something that they, you know, wanted to talk to us about. So, of course, they asked us uh, if we had our fishing licenses on us. And uh, I told them no. None I didn't even know you have to have a license to go fishing. Yeah. I, I don't remember how much it is, but, you know, so I told them no. I mean, none of us, none of us have our licenses. Isn't that just kind of stupid in and of itself? That I have is to this like get, the middle, is this like the Middle Ages or something? Like, like it's their fish? Yeah, like it reminds me of like I was reading a story of Robin Hood to my kids, and you know they were getting in trouble for killing the king's deer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out in the forest. Yeah, yeah same thing. Same, okay. same thing. So he asked us if we had our fishing licenses, and of course I told him no. Now of course I I had not caught any fish. I the total time I was fishing there was probably so you didn't catch any fish. No, the total time I was fishing there was probably ten minutes because they were fishing earlier. You know I wasn't really. I didn't so go you have to have a fishing fish. license to not catch fish too. Yeah. All right. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's funny because one of the charges it's take wildlife without a license is the charge. Yeah. So how can you be charged with taking wildlife? Whenever I didn't take wildlife. Yeah. I didn't catch fish. <laughs> but anyways. So they asked me if I had asked if we had our licenses, and I told them none of us have our license on us. And then he asked, "Well, do you even have a license?" And I, you know, I told him I don't have a license, and I don't know about these two, you know, because I didn't know if they had a license right. or not. And he said, uh, "Well, if you don't have a license, you have to stop fishing right now." Mm -hmm. So I said, "Okay." So we reeled in our lines, and we started to walk down to the boat and started putting everything away. Sounds pretty normal. And you know, as I was, I was walking down, I told him, uh, you know, "Hey, thanks for keeping us safe today." Now, whether or not he took that, you know, however he took that, that's how mm -hmm. he took it. Um, but we walked down and we you started... maybe he just had a guilty conscience? Yeah, maybe that, maybe. So that really got to him? Yeah, so. maybe. But, uh... I got bruises on my ankles from those chains. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, basically, started walking down and then they started to come around. And I knew, okay, mm -hmm. great, here they come to give us you know, more of a hard time about it, even though we're doing what they told us to do. Right. I was you know, being compliant with what they asked me to do, right? And um, <clears throat> so they, they, they pull up on the shore and they get out. And he walks over and he starts asking us again about the fishing license and why we don't have them. You know, and it's like, I thought we already went through this. You've already asked us, we already told you. And now mm -hmm. we're stopping because you told us to. Right. You know, why are you over here giving us a hard time about it? And then he started going on about how the boat wasn't properly registered. You know, this little mm -hmm. aluminum boat. And even though it was registered, but he started getting on us about that, and it eventually got to the point where, you know, I I told him, you know, I'm the adult here. These both of them are underage, you know, so I'm responsible for them. So you can talk to me, you know, you don't have to. They're too young, you know, to right to do anything. Just talk to me. So he said, okay, you know, come over here. So I, I walked over to him, and uh, he said, well, you know, what's your name? I said, I don't want to give you my name. And as soon as that sentence was finished, I was in handcuffs. I mean, like that. Wow. He, he handcuffed me immediately. Because well, you, you dared to question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he man. was immediately handcuffed. And so, <clears throat> you know, now I start, I, I mean, now it's just like I can't believe they're arresting me because I don't have my license, because I didn't have a license to go fishing, you know. And there's other people around, and I'm just like, you know, Anybody else think this is completely ridiculous that I'm in handcuffs right now, you know, being arrested? Because you were fishing with your son. Yeah, because I was out fishing without a, you know, without a license. I was out with my family. You know, I wasn't out there drinking like everybody else. I wasn't right. out no, there. No, that's fine. I wasn't that, out there partying. Okay. Yeah. You can go out and drink yeah. and party yeah. and be an idiot. And he even told me that I was the first person that was arrested that entire weekend. The first person. And I find it a little bit hard to believe that you have all these people out drinking all weekend long. And they're not, they're, they're all, all, none of them are doing anything worse than my fishing without a license, you know. But, 
anyways, um, unbelievable. So they put me in handcuffs, you know, and now I'm to the point where I just like, I can't believe that they're arresting me for this because they told me I was going to jail. They told me yeah, you are under arrest. arrest, you're going to jail, you know, for fishing without a license. That's what they told me was the reason. Um, of course, there's that secondary misdemeanor that they charged me with, obstruction, you know, failing to give true name or something like that. And they're both class one misdemeanors. And I didn't even know about the second one until I was in court at 2 a.m. the next day. Now, what class one? What does that mean? Well, I think mine were class three misdemeanors. Yeah, class one is worse. Oh, class one is worse? Five is the least, I believe. I'm pretty sure. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it gets worse as you get to okay. class one. Because <clears throat> a lot of people both class three. A lot of people that saw that they were class ones that I was talking to while I was incarcerated, they couldn't believe that that was a class one. So, so basically, you go fishing. You just get out a fishing pole in an aluminum boat. Yeah. And start fishing, and it's a class one misdemeanor. Yeah. Because you have to get their permission. And yeah. Get a license to fish. Exactly. Unbelievable. <clears throat> and it's a hundred and two dollar bond for take wildlife without valid license. Uh -huh. And then the obstruction refused true name is also class one, but with a five hundred dollar bond. So you get to pay six hundred dollars to get out of jail. Well, they they do some kind of prorated thing. I don't understand <coughs> how they do it, but a lot. But of it's six hundred and two dollars. Yeah, that's that was the bond. Says. That yeah. was the bond. So, um, you know, if you refuse the name to a cop, which I didn't, I didn't know that that was a class one misdemeanor with a five hundred dollar bond on it. You know, that's it's. it's I, I don't think that's fair. Do you think that's fair? That, that charge, I mean, as far as the, the penalty, <laughs> exactly. The penalty is all wrong. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. And, you know, that's what was getting me so upset. The whole thing's stupid. Everything. I mean, all the stuff that's going on in the world right now, and, you know, all they can find to do is cruise around in their and stupid harass, boat and, and come harass, harass you because you're taking out. your little boy fishing. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's stupid. It's, it makes me so, you know, of course, but this, I mean, you could tell that the, this cop did not like me because, you know, I, I stood up to him and I was like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be afraid after, of him. But hold on a second. After you sat there and complied with yeah. everything he said. And then he started, I mean, this is to the point where he's already just just harassing you and just keeps going on and on. I mean, you'd already, the, the conversation was over. Yeah, You had totally exactly. complied. You did what he said. You So you weren't just picking a fight. No, no, guy. no. The guy had already left and then he came back. And then he came back. They, and they just came keeps back. pushing you and pushing, pushing you me. until you say one little cross until, and, thing. Yeah. I don't want to give you my name. Because you know you give him your name and it's like gonna haunt you. And yeah, everything. exactly. And then all of a sudden you're in cuffs. Yep. And you know, and he's trying to, he's like, why, why are you giving me this attitude? And I'm like, look, man, I was, you know, we were doing what you asked us to do. We were in compliance with what you told us to do. And you're, but you're the, it's your fault. Yeah, it's my you're fault. You're the one with the attitude. And they Not him with the attitude. And they gave, I, I just thought, I found this after the fact, obviously, I just got out. I had no contact with anybody I knew for, you know, 48 hours. But mm -hmm. I uh, just found out that he had given <laughs> both of the kids that I was with you know, both of his son's mm -hmm. tickets also for fishing without a license. So they both got a ticket too. Wow. And he told them if he didn't act the way he had acted, that they wouldn't have gotten tickets. Like, because it's my fault that they, you know, that they got tickets too. So basically he's trying to turn you, or turn them against you. Yeah, yeah. So he tells them, oh, the reason you're getting this ticket is because of him. Because of him. You know, they still, I, I wasn't read my Miranda rights the entire time. I never heard them once from anybody. Well, did you hear the Supreme Court's ruling? I think, what was it, yesterday? Yeah, that's what that the said that, was uh, You don't have the right, right to remain yeah. silent anymore? Yep, unless you, like, say it and even, and, and then, then you answer a question. Yeah. If, you, if you tell them what your name is, for yeah. example, maybe. So, so then, I mean, this cop was, he was, you know, according to them, I was being belligerent. But I can tell you truthfully right now that I wasn't raising my voice. I wasn't, you know, I was telling them what was going on was completely ridiculous and that it was this unfair. This is after you're in cuffs? After I'm in cuffs, yeah. you know. So I'm still, you know, going on about that, but I wasn't being Well, you're already in, they've already arrested you at that point. They've yeah. already told you you're going to jail. So, so they can't use that to justify what they've already done. Yeah, yeah. Does it make sense? So, you know, but of course the cop continued to be a jerk to me. Uh, a few points, for example, uh, I never got his name. He was wearing some sort of like life jacket that was right. covering up his name and his badge. And whenever I asked him for the name, he said deputy. That's all. Oh, he so he does, so he doesn't have to tell you his name, but yeah. you have to tell yeah. him your name. Yeah, yeah, of course. Even though he's supposed to work for us, it's ridiculous. But yeah, he said it's just deputy. That's all you need to know. Well, what, you should have just told him my name's Sir. <laughs> I'm sure that would have flown, right? Yeah. So. You know, and then stuff like they had their, their German Shepherd up on the boat, you know, that's just, it wants to get at me, <laughs> because that's how they train those dogs. So as I'm getting in the boat, you know, and they're, they're tying off the dog, I ask them, you know, please make sure that dog's secure, you know. 
And he's like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. You put yourself in this situation. Whatever happens, happens. You know? Unbelievable. Yeah, it's just like, you know, if this dog bites you, it's your fault. And ridiculous. Um, they didn't put a life jacket on me, even though one of the, the deputies... You know, and then, and, and then, they, then they, they wonder why people have a bad feeling toward the police. Yeah. When this is the way they treat us yeah. in Phoenix all the time. Yeah, that's what he asked me later after they had put me in solitary confinement that they had at the lake for like three hours. He, he kept coming in, like every, like three times he came in, you know, like every hour he'd come in just to like, you know, oh, is, is reality setting in now, you know, trying to like break me down. That's how they treated me in the Border me. Patrol trailer for 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah. They tell me how it's my fault yeah. and, and I'm an idiot. You're, yeah, you're making you're not so big now. Yeah, you're not so tough, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, even like in, you're a kid, like, oh, did you learn your lesson, yeah, Johnny? Yeah, even, even in solitary confinement where I was at, they had, they had started bringing in some other people and that same cop was going around giving them all ice water, offering them ice water, but I didn't get offered an ice water. You know, I was drinking out of the toilet, yeah. the little toilet thing yeah. there too. Oh, believe me, I know. And uh, So go go back though, okay, so you're, you're handcuffed. You're put in. You're put into their boat. You've got this dog threatening you. And, yeah, this dog was like this far from me. And they're telling you, "Hey, it just yeah. might." You know. Yeah. If it does, that's your own fault. So, so take us step by step. You know, from there to the jail. Um, well, at, the, anything at that point, well, I had, I, had, I didn't want to deal with this guy anymore because I knew he, you know, he had like this personal vendetta just to punish me for what I did. You know, just to. I don't know, get even, and, you know, for whatever, for my... So I, I had asked for, like, a supervisor or something. So I had a supervisor come down, and he, he got me, and he was the one who, uh, who took me down. But even, even after I, you know, was taken away from him, I, that guy was back there harassing me later. And uh, so they put me, basically, uh, they put me... Did they put you in a squad car or something? Yeah, they put they me in a you? squad car there. Um, which was really uncomfortable too, but they, they put me in the squad car, they took me to that solitary uh, confinement, and basically I just sat in there, not, I mean, they didn't tell me really anything, obviously, I, and sat in there for three hours, and then they had somebody else that uh, worked for the Phoenix Police Department, because I was with uh, Maricopa, Maricopa County, County Sheriff. Sheriff's yeah. Department, yeah. So Phoenix Police Department came there and picked me up and drove me all the way from Bartlett Lake down to Madison and Fourth mm -hmm. Avenue, so I could start getting processed. Right. And, uh, and I mean, just from there on out, it was just it was insane just to see the process and all of, all of that was just. So this is so now we're entering the phase of you get to the you get to the jail. Yeah. Okay. Tell us tell us the the good the bad and the ugly of. Uh, getting processed into the jail? Well, you know, the first thing, you go in, um, they line you up, you're, you're sitting down, and, you know, you have all these people that are, you know, that are guilty until they prove themselves innocent, of course, mm -hmm. sitting down there, and you have all the cops behind this desk, and just the whole time I was there, just the cops were just mocking, making fun, I mean, of everybody, of everybody. That, that, that's under arrest. Uh -huh. You know, just, I mean, just trying to everybody, humiliate you. everybody was just mocking. I mean, everything you would say, like, you know, a lady was down there saying how, you know, her rights were being violated and, you know, and they're just sitting there mocking her and making fun of her. And they were doing that about, like, everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, people were, like, obviously a lot of people were drunk, DUIs, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they were stumbling around. And, I mean, it was, it was crazy, but they were mocking those people, too, making right. fun of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I mean, I was sitting there with that for a while, and, oh, <laughs> I skipped over a part, you know, the, the cop that came and got me with the Phoenix Police Department, mm -hmm. you know, he's like, you know, are you going to be in any trouble? You know, because I was riding with him, you know, right. because he wanted to know if, if I was going to be in trouble, I had to ride with my hands behind my back, but if I would behave myself, I could ride with them in front. Well, they made me ride with them behind yeah, my back I did. for over an hour. See, that, that, that would be horrible, because I was in, in the back it, of that plastic I was in it, your knees are yeah, like was in it. I was in it like that for about half an hour, yeah. and I was like, this is... I was in it like that for... I had them behind my back for hours all together. Yeah, so I was like... But, but in the back of the car like yeah, this, because yeah. you, you don't have room for your legs at all, right? No. And you're like this, and you have to go to the bathroom? Yeah. It was, yeah, so, you know, of course, even though I guess, you know, fishing without a license means that I'm a violent person or whatever. Right. Well, yeah, you know, who knows what you'll do. Because he was like, he was like, you know, because I told him, of course I'm going to behave myself, you know, I, yeah. I would prefer to ride with my hands in front of me. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like, okay, I'll let you, but if you, if you misbehave, if you act up, you know, I'll fill the back of that squad car with pepper spray. That's what he told me. And it's just like, you know, just threats after threats after mocking, I mean, it's just nonstop the whole time. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So I'm, I'm in there, you know, getting processed, getting, getting checked in, and uh, from there it's just, you know, one, I mean, they're just all about, you know, breaking you down, you know, trying to humiliate you, trying to, you know, make you feel like a horrible person. I mean, from there I got, uh, I went in and I, I was searched, I was strip searched, mm -hmm. went in, had to, uh, you know, get strip searched. Um, after I got strip searched. Shower. No, I, I didn't, they, were, they didn't give me a shower. After I got strip search, then I moved in, you know, they had these holding tanks. And in between all these processes, you had to go to these holding tanks. And they'd have a whole bunch of people in there, you know, 20 people in there. Um, obviously, like I said, a lot of them were drunk. Uh, I was in one of the, one of the for the first, probably, probably the first two hours that I was being processed, because it took like seven hours to be processed. Wow. The first two hours, I was constantly with this guy who was drunk, who had, you know, soiled his pants, I mean, Ugh. both ways, you know, just Ugh. filthy, filthy. And, you know, that's what you're, you're, you're just with. forced, in you're forced in with it, yeah. And so I'm being processed, uh, I had to, uh, I had to, you know, get fingerprinted, they fingerprinted me, and I mean, it was different because all the people that were there that were pro doing the processing for me, all the like detention officers and all those people, they couldn't believe that I was there because of my charges. Because they obviously knew what I was being charged with. Right. You know, they got to look at it. And, uh, you know, they were, I mean, they were all making the joke out of it. Like, you know, I can't believe that you're actually here for this. That's mm -hmm. pretty ridiculous. And, and, they, and they held you for 48 hours. 48 hours. And the only reason that you got out is just because your friends got together, got the money, we came down there, and they were on the ball, your mom, your friends, everybody, yeah. to get you out, and it still took 48 hours yeah. Yeah. to get you out. Yeah, it still took 48 hours. So, uh, so you know, then it, since, I, since I couldn't get out in time, you know, because, it, like I said, it took about seven hours to process and everything, and there's a couple people who got, you know, who somebody paid their bond, they got out. But that didn't happen that quick for me because I couldn't get a hold of anybody. Right. The phones there, you can only call landlines. You can't call cell phones. And the only Nobody landline, has a landline, the only landline I know is my work. So mm -hmm. I even called my work, try to get because my sister works with me, try to get a hold of her, but I couldn't do it. And uh, so because of that, you know, I had to go. I got uh, assigned my pink underwear, my pink socks, my stripes. Yeah. So they give you pink underwear just to humiliate you yeah. as a man. Yeah. Put you in pink underwear. And the pink just socks. To, just to try to tear you down and just yep. to try to, uh, you know. And, and isn't that like an unusual punishment? Yeah. Like putting someone in pink underwear as a man? Yeah. Like, you know, you think of cruel punishment, but the Constitution says no unusual punishments. Yeah. And that is unusual. And That's cause, not cause something. Because the founding fathers didn't intend for people to be humiliated in yeah. strange ways. Yeah. I mean, you look at. I mean, I, I don't know how all the other jail systems are, but I don't think they're all using pink underwear. No, I don't think no. that's standard. No, you, you, Brett, live in probably the worst county in America, yeah. literally, to go to jail. Yeah, I believe it. Not I, to say, not to say that this kind of stuff doesn't go on elsewhere. So I mean, like I like I was saying, I was I was incarcerated for a total of about forty eight hours, mm -hmm. and about 40 of, 40 of those hours I was being processed. I mean, the processing was. I think you said it took like seven hours to get processed. To get to get checked in. Oh, to get seven hours to get checked in. Yeah, to get checked in, and then they were still moving around, still Just moving. Processing me. for like forty. Yeah, hours move me, together. move me to this building. I went to like all these different buildings. I wasn't just in one spot. Mm -hmm. I started off at Madison, then they moved me to Durango, and then I, they moved me to LBJ, which is a different facility. Mm -hmm. So I was getting moved around all the time, and that's why that's what took forty hours. Oh wow! Now the whole time I was being moved around, any time. Um, I was I'd be put in the tank, you know, with a whole bunch of other people with that same stainless steel toilet drinking fountain, mm -hmm. and uh, any time we were moved around, I was put into cuffs and shackles around my ankles. Any time mm -hmm. I was moved, right. So now now I'm given my my stripes, you know, my my underwear, your black and white stripes, black and uh, white stripes, prison and, clothes, yeah, my prison clothes, and uh, you know I had to put those on, and um, and the. The, the tanks that you're held in, they're, like I was saying, they're extremely bright, they're extremely cold, mm -hmm. and they're extremely uncomfortable. It's all concrete, mm -hmm. even the bench, so people can't lie down flat on the bench. They put these Yeah, metal, but Brett, Brett everybody rebar. who's there has done all kinds of horrible, wicked, and violent things. I know, either, right? Yeah, I mean, not like, fishing, like without, fishing without, license. without a license, or you know, saying something that a police officer doesn't like. Yeah. So, 
um, so obviously those 40 hours were not very comfortable. Like I was telling you right now, I mean, I'm very sore. My body is, yeah. my rear end is very sore. So what other kind of ankles. Weird, what other kind of weird stuff um, you exposed to in there besides the guy who soiled himself front and back? Um, as far as like, uh, well, you know, basically all the waiting around, um, the people that you were in there with weren't exactly the cleanest people, you know, and so that was just, and you didn't know what time it was, you had no, and I've never, for, for anybody who's ever like not gone a period of time not knowing what time it is, you know, it, it, it messes, is, with, it you. messes with your it head, weird. it messes with your head, and because you don't know if it's day or night. You don't know if it's day or night. You, I mean, it, it messes with your head a lot. It messes with your sleeping. Like I said, I've only, I only got like five hours of sleep the past 72 hours. Mm. It messes with you big time. And uh, no contact with anybody, you know, there's obviously a lot of things. Well, you didn't know, you didn't even I didn't know, know it's going to end after 48 hours. Yeah, you don't I didn't know when it's going to end. I didn't know. I, I didn't know if I was going to be there until my court date, which was eight yeah. days away. Yes, yeah, right. I, I did not know. I didn't know anything. I didn't know if anybody knew where I was. I didn't know who knew anything. I mean, I didn't know anything. You know, there's a lot of questions. I didn't know. There's two vehicles that we took to the lake. Mm -hmm. You know, my son, all, all my family. You know, it's like, how is that all being handled? It's I didn't know anything. Right. So I mean, that doesn't make yeah, you don't know what happened to your truck. Yeah. Your son. That doesn't make the situation any yeah. more you know pleasant. Just sitting there wondering. You know, and obviously that's for just fishing another, on Memorial Day with no fishing alcohol. On, yeah, with no alcohol, right. just fishing. No, not even catching a fish. <laughs> not even catching a fish. So taking wildlife, you didn't even catch a fish. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously, it. I was arrested at about, I believe, around 1 p.m. on Memorial Day, mm -hmm. and um, I went to court 2 a.m. the next morning. And that's whenever I found out that I had that secondary misdemeanor charge against me, the obstruction. Mm -hmm. Because all, all they had told me was I was going to prison for not having my license. That's the only thing. And then later I found out there was another charge that they added on there too. Mm -hmm. So that's whenever I was told, you know, my bond, how much my bond was that I had to pay to get out. But I didn't have anything on me. You know, I was fishing. Right. I, I, all I had was my sunglasses on me. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't pay for the bond myself. You know, there's no way for me to pay for it. Right. And there's no way for me to get a hold of anybody. Mm -hmm. So now it's just basically I hope that they figure out what's going on and they come and, you know, put up my bond so I can get out of here. You know, I have work, I have a life, I, you know, I don't want to lose my job because I'm in here, I don't want to lose my job because I don't have a license, you know, I was out fishing. So, that, that was another thing that was just really wearing on, wearing on me, you know, and uh, mentally. And then finally, after waiting and waiting, I think um, it took me up to, and of course, like uh, we already talked about it, but like the food, I couldn't eat the food. I mean, the food was was so bad. I tried to eat some of it, but I couldn't. I had, couldn't even force it. Down. I couldn't even so force nasty. it down. It was so nasty. So tell us about the food. What was the break down um, the food for us? Two meals. Breakfasts were always the same, which was just like this like this bag that had peanut butter in it, a cup of peanut butter, and a guy told me how they made the peanut butter, so that didn't help my how appetite with peanut butter. They, they get like, you know, the government issued peanut butter, which is fine, and then they mix it with equal parts of oil. And they mix the two together and they just mix that up. And that's the peanut butter. You know, they want to add more more volume to it by mixing so it they with stretch oil. it with they oil. stretch it with the oil. And you know, so you get your little cup of peanut butter, you get these two weird loaves of bread that who knows what's in them or where they came from, you know. Um, and this little this little uh, fake juice cup type thing, you know, a little hug is what it was called. A little hug. A little hug from from Sheriff Joe Arpaio. So, <laughs> so it's like a, it's one of those like zero percent fruit juice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Completely fake. So obviously, there's like, like I had told you, my court date was the ninth, and I already had made up my mind that and I it's like be first. It would be yeah, it'd be better for me not not to eat. Right. I mean. It was so bad. Yeah, and that in that forty-eight times, forty-eight hour time span, I probably had a total of three or four. So bites it's not, it wasn't organic. No, it wasn't organic. It was not non-processed. You know, it was, and then like with the water, like I was telling you, the water, the drinking fountain was part of the toilet. You know, you'd wash your hands in the same place where you would drink. Well, not you wash it. Mr. Soiled himself yeah. from the back. Is yeah, he's, using he's it the one who's using well, we it. Well, we wish he exactly. used it, but he, you know, he's washing his hands. Yeah, he's drinking out of it. Everybody else. So basically, people, yeah. I would, 
basically I was just waiting. Like I would get to somewhere and it's like I don't want to use this one. It's you know it's pretty bad. So I was just trying to look for the cleanest, dirty toilet to drink out of. Mm -hmm. Basically, bottom line. Right. And uh, so I didn't drink very much water either. And so I mean after obviously like I said the processing was just horrible. You know both physically and mentally. Um, to, they just treat you like dirt. And then finally I got into where I would stay if I had stayed longer, you know, right. in Durango, where I actually got my own personal bed, got my sheets, you know. Uh, that was the more, you know, not, I don't want to say permanent, but it was the, yeah. the final destination yeah, the final this destination. whole process. So you were yeah. only there for like six, seven hours? Yeah, in, in, in Durango, gotcha. in the room. Mm -hmm. Now the room is set up, um, it's in a building, and there's four pods in the building, mm -hmm. A, B, C, and D. And you're assigned to a certain pod, and there's probably about, uh, I would say, maybe 40 people top in the pod. And, <clears throat> you know, that's where the, I was really surprised about what was going on in the pods. Because you get in the pod, and you start to notice, like, the people in the pod, they, a lot of them want to be there. Like, these people, you know, you hear about the revolving doors mm -hmm. in the jail system. I mean, these people, they understand that. They know how the system works, and they take advantage of it. Mm. They want to be there because they're getting fed, they're getting medical, they're getting housing, they're getting clothes. They're getting, they, get, they get drugs. Like wow. I said, 40 people, and whenever it was drug time, about over half of them lined up. Mm -hmm. And they were giving them whatever, whatever they wanted. You know, you, this one, I mean, this one guy got like 10 pills. And, I mean, we're talking... Like, narcotics. We're talking narcotics. That's what they are. We're yeah. I mean, Vicodin. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. oh, straight up opiate narcotics. Yeah, that's mind al mind altering drugs. They were taking. Mm -hmm. You know, antidepressants. Yeah. I mean, it's like muscle relaxers. Yeah, whatever they said. I mean, they just all they'd have to say is, you know, my back's hurting, or you know, I'm having problems sleeping, and it's just drugs. There yeah. you go. And you know, I saw people. So what did you order? What, <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> I saw people who were who would take their pill, then they'd walk over to the table and take it out of their mouth. Uh, and then use the pill for whatever, save it for later, sell it, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And, and not only that, but they were all making uh, their own alcohol in there too. So they're making alcohol They're making in alcohol in, in jail. They would take their juice and they would put some kind of like gobstopper. Or so they took the little of, hug? No, not the little hug, because there you could buy commissary. So it was real juice. It was real yeah. juice. And they would mix in like sugary stuff with it and pieces of fruit and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they would let it ferment. They'd take it in the right. shower and get it warm. You know, take it in the shower with them, get it warm, and just let it ferment. And then whenever, you know, whenever it's nice and fermented, they drink it, you know. Get drunk. Get drunk. Jail. Get drunk in jail. So you got these people, like I said, who's getting food, housing, medical, you know, and now they're getting their drugs. You know, drunk. they're getting drunk. You know, and then the rest of the time they're just sitting around playing cards, you know. And, and these but people. But for somebody like you, who's a normal who, person. I don't want to be there. Clean and I don't want to be there. It's just the filthiest yeah. cesspool that you could be in. Yeah, exactly. You, don't, these, you know, these people are living a filthy life. They're, they, they're, they're, used they're to, loving it. They're used to this disgusting food and the stench of, of feces and vomit and alcohol. And yeah, exactly. And it, I mean, even, even in there, I mean, it was still, it was still really dirty, obviously, obviously, even in there. And <clears throat> but the 40-hour processing was the worst part. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was just horrible. Because at least in there, I could just go up on my bunk and try to sleep. Just do your own or at least just lie there, you know, or something. But, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, they, and these people, and I, we talked about it. And they, they told me that, you know, that they, they preferred to be in there. That they actually preferred to be in there because of everything they were getting. And they, under, they understood, I mean, because it's not hard for someone to get in, get into there, you know. You just violate you your just probation. Go yeah, or you just go fishing and you're put in there. <laughs> and uh, so these people knew, you know, it, and it's 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 pretty ridiculous because they were also talking about like, you know, these people are the ones that get like the attorneys provided for them, you know, the public defender. yeah, the public defender, which I would did not get, you mm. know, and uh, and um, I don't think it does any good anymore. No, it doesn't. But he works for them. Yeah. So, and, and then these guys, you know, all these people are talking about like, you know, oh yeah, I'm going to get out, you know, I have $250 on my food stamp card that I'm going to use up and then I'll probably just come back, you know, so this is what they were saying. Wow. So, it was, it was completely, I mean, in there it was, I was really just completely shocked at, you know, how, how they were living, how these people were living inside this jail. 
it's they it's something I mean it's not something I, w I would want to be immersed in you know I want to get out of there as quickly as possible but these people they they love it they're, they're eating better than they than they normally eat, you know and it's, everything's just provided for them everything so I finally um, you know somebody paid my bond I had no idea who it was you know I know now of course but then I did not know all I knew was they, they called my name mm -hmm. you know and then I had to start the process of them checking me out which was the same thing as the process of them checking me in right it's, you know overcrowded rooms you know and with all these filthy people um, and uh, you know, it's, it's sad that, that that's the condition they're in, but I mean, a fact is a fact, you know, a meth addict is going to be a filthy person. So I'm, I'm shoved into this room with all these people, same type of room, cold, really bright, really uncomfortable. And, that cop, and that cop was sleeping in his soft, comfortable yeah. bed. Yeah. You know. But he has, a fa he has a family, so I mean, you know, we should probably feel a little sympathy for him because he has a family, but, you know. What about us? You know, you and me, we have families too. Yeah, exactly. But people don't have sympathy for us because no. we're lawbreakers, because we're, we deserve the penalty. And that's another thing that you just think about it logically, and you try to say, okay, is the punishment that I received, you know, is that a fair Comparable punishment yeah, for, for the, crime. the crime that I committed? Which is really, I mean, obviously I, I would argue that, that, that it's not even a crime. You know? Well, yeah, of that, that kind of law is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, can they make a law against breathing next? I mean, what, what they're just making it illegal just to do a normal everyday activity. Yeah. You know, and do you call that a crime? Mm -hmm. You know, it's stupid. So, um, the, the the process getting out was just the same. Uh, and basically, basically they own the fish, Brad. Let me explain it to you. Let me break it down to you real quick. They own the fish in the lake. Okay. So when you pay to buy the license, okay, you're paying them money. You're basically buying the fish. You just have to go pick up the fish yourself because they own everything. I know it's called public, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be called a public place. It should be just called a government-owned. Mm -hmm. Everything's government-owned. Every animal is owned by the government, even though the Bible says that you know God owns every beast in the forest and the cattle on a thousand hills. The government owns every fish, every animal, so you have to pay them. You have to pay them to eat that fish yeah. or to catch that fish that you didn't even catch. I, I didn't catch and it. if you don't pay them, if you don't buy the wild animals from them, because they own every wild animal, yeah. if you don't buy it from them, then they'll throw you in jail, humiliate you, make you wear pink underwear as a man, mm -hmm. feed you uh, nasty, you know, disgusting food and, and artificial, yeah. you know, unhealthy yeah. junk shove you in with people that are in their own feces, yeah. make fun of you, razz you, tease you, tell you it's all your fault, mm -hmm. you know. It's unbelievable. And, and this, I, is, this is, and we live in the, in the free country. Yeah. We have liberty. Yeah. Isn't and, it wonderful? And like I, like I said, probably the worst part of it was just the fact of not knowing anything. That was probably the worst part of it. Not having any idea. Not knowing when it's going to happen. I end. mean, the, the physical stuff, you know, it, it, it was horrible in and of itself, you know, being put through all that. But just, yeah, the, the fact of not knowing anything about, you know, anything outside, yeah, the psychological part of it was definitely the worst part of it. And, and you don't know what's happening with your job? Yeah. Am I going to have Is my some, job? Did somebody call in and tell the yeah. work that you're not going to be in Yeah, because I couldn't. I couldn't no communication with anybody. With anybody. So, it was, oh. I mean, to say the least, it was, uh, it was a pretty, pretty horrible experience. But, I mean, and <clears throat> that's what... Uh, I've been asked, like, you know, by these people who like to tell me, well, you should have just answered the question. You know, these, this group of people that think you should just, oh, yeah, you should have just answered the question. You should have just, you know, done what he Which, told you to do. let's face it, you totally cooperated yeah, oh, yeah. the first time until oh, yeah. he just pushed it to an extreme. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, was when you even started to question anything. Yeah, because he started, I mean, after the, I mean, he, he, kept, he kept going with the, the questions. And you'd answered and the, a bunch of questions yeah, already. Yeah, I, I had already answered told a bunch him, of honestly, honestly, I don't have a license. Yeah, you went through all of it. You know, and if he would have given me a ticket for that, then, you know, okay. But, you know, I answered him truthfully. I told him, he told me and to stop And wouldn't a fishing. ticket have made more sense anyway than going to jail? 48 hours in jail. Yeah, wouldn't it have made more sense to just get a ticket for fishing without a license? Not that I agree with that, but, yeah. I mean, wouldn't that make a little more sense? Yeah, it, it would make a lot more sense. I mean, what's next? You know, are you, if you're speeding, are they going to put you in jail? Yeah. You know, are they going to put you in jail because you... You know, jaywalked because mm -hmm. you did commit a crime. Yeah. Yeah, and then the the other thing you said about how uh, 
they basically put you in the boat after you're handcuffed mm -hmm. with no life jacket on. Yeah. Okay. Which I literally have a friend that was at that exact same lake a few days before you were there, got ticketed for not having enough life jackets in the boat. They have you handcuffed with no life jacket. Handcuffed, yeah. What if something would have happened on the boat? Yeah. You fall out, you you're gonna die. Yeah, so because you can't swim with your hands. Yeah, there was the two, right with no life there's the two the two deputies, the one uh -huh. that was the one that arrested me that put the handcuffs on right. me. The other one was the one was like, Hey, do we put do we need to put a life jacket on him? Uh -huh. And the guy said, Well we're not going that far, so we don't have to. I wonder if that excuse will work for me, like, I'm not going that far, so I don't need my seatbelt. Yeah. You think that the officer will will allow that? No, he won't. he won't. I was just, officer, I was only going a short distance. Yeah, yeah. So, and I mean, that's, you know, that's just another thing, just to, I mean, besides that dog and not having that on, not being offered any water. I mean, it's yeah, just... Yeah, so, so there you have it. And so, who, who do people need to complain to about this? Because I think people well, need to file a complaint about the fact that... Uh, you know, you were basically put in this boat, you were handcuffed, no life jacket, there's a dog threatening you, and you just, had, all you asked them to do was just to make sure that the dog was secure. And they said, hey, whatever happens, happens. You're the one who put yourself yeah. in this position. You know, this guy was clearly just out to get you. He's just trying to just punish you for, uh, for, for nothing. Yeah. You know, he just enjoys it. And so what's this, what's this guy's name? I mean, is his name on this thing? Or on the what? bottom there, I think that's him. Deputy Ratcliffe, and uh, it looks like the serial number is 1553. So this guy, Deputy Ratcliffe, uh, basically just gets a kick out of uh, just tormenting, clean-cut, you know, innocent uh, Americans. You know, he just, he just thinks it's fun because they won't bow down and lick his boots to uh, torment them. So, again, that's Deputy Ratcliffe. Serial number 1553.